Hey crafty people, it's Tasha here, back with another video for Pear Blossom Press. Today we're going to be doing some trickery to get four lights in one card. I'm using both a one light and an easy light, some Hero Arts goodies, black cardstock from Pear Blossom Press, Lindy's Magicals, and a few bits that I forgot to get together here. <laughs> we're starting with the background and I've got an A2 panel of Hero Arts watercolour cardstock on my glass mat. I'm taking a tiny bit of my two Magicals powders out of the pots with a dry brush. These are just pigment powders which react to water and a little goes a very long way with these. I'm just swiping my wet brush side to side, picking up a little bit more powder whenever I think I need to. I don't have a pot of water, I'm just using a spray bottle to create a puddle directly on my glass mat. <laughs> it is not the ideal method, but hey, it works. Plus, this is the most accessible way for me to do this kind of water technique without needing anyone else's help. You can make a smooth colour wash if that's what you're after, but I was going for a little more texture and I really like the variation in colour. I'll set that aside to dry fully. Now I've got a red rubber cling stamp from Hero Arts. I've got it in my Misty and I've removed the mouse mat already and then to keep my panel in place whilst I stamp it, I'm adding a couple of lines of adhesive onto the back of it. I'm using Versafine Onyx Black ink because this is a really detailed stamp and I love using Versafine for those. It's a large stamp so I'm using my pressure tool to make sure that I get a really good impression and I love how it's turned out. I let that dry off camera again and now I'm adding some stenciling over the top. I'm going for layers on this background. I've got my white pearl hero paste and I like to give it a bit of a mix when I open it. I'm putting some on the top of my stencil with a palette knife and then I'll use a stencil pal to spread that out evenly across the whole image. I love using a stencil pal because not only does it help to evenly distribute the paste, it makes it so much quicker to do as well. <laughs> I'm putting that excess back in the tub for another project. Peeling back that stencil reveals the gorgeous pattern. Then you want to get everything cleaned away right away because if this stuff sets on your stencil or tools it's going to be impossible to remove. Again this needs to dry so set that aside and let's work on our focal element. I've die cut the chandelier fancy die from Pear Blossom Press's black cardstock. I really like this because I just I love how dark a black this stuff is and it die cuts absolutely beautifully. Next I've cut it from some double sided adhesive foam which is going to give my chandelier some lift and dimension. I'm using my tweezers to pick out all of the little negative bits of foam. Then I can peel back the release a bit at a time and adhere my black die cut on top. Off camera, I did try adding the cardstock onto the foam before die cutting, but unfortunately that did crack the cardstock, so I just went back to this. I want to work on my lights whilst my background dries so I've got another A2 panel and this is going to become my base panel and I can build up my lights from here. Like I said before I'm going to use a one light and an easy light to get the four lights total that I need for my chandelier. So there's a specific place that each of my lights needs to be because they need to line up with that chandelier. So I'm drawing around the die and I'll mark off the exact place where each light will go. That way I know where I need to secure my lights. That way I know where I need to secure my lights. Now this was a little bit of an epic <laughs> but I got there in the end um, and I've got lots of tips to help you avoid the pitfalls that I fell into. <laughs> so I'm starting with my easy light and securing each light down to the base panel with some tape just over the wires. This is going to cover three of my chandelier lights. 
I'm not sticking down the battery pack um, and the switch bit yet because I need to position the one light before I can do that. At this point, I thought that I'd have my lights secured to the back panel, but as you're going to see in a few minutes, I ended up changing that. But for now, this works though, because it helps me start working out the placement of everything. Next, I'm checking the one light to see where that's going to sit. I'm being careful to make sure that wherever it goes, I've got enough space to fit both battery packs next to each other so that both switches are next to each other. And I'm securing both of them down with some double-sided adhesive on the back. For those excess wires, I'm simply wrapping them around, just twisting them how they naturally want to sit, and then securing that in place with some more tape. I'm testing by pressing both buttons down at the same time. I know that I need to figure out how I'm going to go about getting both pressed together, but I decided to have a moment's pause on that whilst I worked on my sentiments. This little stamp set is great for interactive cards. I couldn't put my hands on my gold embossing powder um, and I knew that I wanted my sentiments to be gold on black, so I kind of had to improvise a little. I also couldn't find my acrylic blocks, so this is just going to have to do. It's some chaotic energy. <laughs> I stamped in gold pigment ink and then added clear powder on top of that and it worked out so well. Off camera, I went on a hunt through my stash for the perfect sentiment and found it in this, this set from Time for Tea Designs. I embossed it in the same way and cut it out with the coordinating die. I've handled this cardstock quite a bit at this point, so I'm laying down some anti-static powder first. I know that it looks awful at this stage, but once my sentiment is embossed, I can just easily wipe away any trace of that white dust. I'm setting those sentiments aside with my chandelier because my background panel is dry and I want to mark out where the holes for the lights need to be. The easiest way to do this is to literally just hold it in place on the base panel, press the buttons so that the lights come on and mark my background everywhere I see a light. Now back to the base panel. I've got an idea of how I want to do the switches now, but I need to build up the foam adhesive around the rest of the area, so around the rest of the panel, so that I can test my idea. So I'm using the world's best foam tape from Pear Blossom Press, and I start by building up the edges of my panel before filling in some of those gaps in the center. This is double thickness foam, and it's usually the perfect depth for any of the light options from Pear Blossom Press, but building up a way to press two buttons at once is going to add some extra thickness. So I decided I'm going to have to double up the foam for this one. Definitely one for hand delivery only. For my switch, I went super simple and I just relied on some good old paper. I've got a strip that I kind of concertina folded on itself several times just to thicken it and make it sturdy enough. Then the one light button is actually a little higher than the easy light so I included a couple of extra folds on the easy light side. This way both buttons are level now and the card bridge is thick enough to withstand being pressed in the centre without bowing. This way it's going to push both buttons from one finger push. Genius, but so simple. <laughs> Now we have to put the holes into that background. Um, I don't have a special tool to do this, so I'm just pushing through with my pick up and poke tool with a self-healing mat behind to protect my desk. Once I have those, I can do a test to make sure that those holes are lined up. They are, but I'm noticing that the one light is quite a bit brighter, plus it's actually higher up than the easy light ones. So I'm changing things up a bit. With the pokey tool, I'm working through the tape to release the individual lights. And then I'm adding another bit of that double thickness foam tape. And I'm gonna stick it under and stick the wires to that instead. 
This way, the lights are much closer to the background and we're not losing so much of their brightness. Once I've got them in place, I'm testing them again and I'm much happier with that. I decided to add the chandelier to the background panel before adhering that to the base because I can get a better judge on whether the chandelier bulbs are definitely in the right place. They've got a gap in each one and I need to add this gap over the holes I made for the light to get through so it's a bit of a delicate operation. I removed the backing from just the bulbs first and stuck them in place. Then I'm just using my pokey tool to pull out the rest of the backing as I pressed each section down. And now my chandelier is in exactly the place I want it. Once the background panel is adhered, I can glue down my little push sentiment so my recipient knows exactly where the button is. I positioned it right in between the two buttons where that cardboard bridge is so that it turns on both lights at one time. I love it when a plan comes together. Next I'm adhering some candle embellishment pieces onto my chandelier but after I glued the first couple down I realised it's going to make so much more sense to just cut those bulb bits off the chandelier and put these embellishments straight in their place. I could have saved myself a good few minutes of positioning if I'd thought about it before but it's all good fun and it's good practice too. With the sentiment in place, that's my card finished. Like I said, it was a bit of a winding road, but I really do love where we ended up. And I think with those embellishments on, it still looks good whether you've got the lights on or not, but those lights are pretty cracker. <laughs> Thank you so much for spending this time with me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Just all the things. We appreciate it so much. Have a lovely, happy, safe and wonderful week. Stay crafty. Bye.